it from me. The go home edition for WWE SummerSlam of Monday Night Raw was an enthralling experience. Identities were unmasked, a surprise return was made, a demonic element was seen in a girl that was supposedly sweet, and things were made entirely personal between two of the heated rivals set to collide at the biggest party of the summer. So, fans, this is me, Nick Anjwalia, from your favorite channel, WrestleFan, and ready to break down tonight's edition of Monday Night Raw. And let's get down to it in our weekly show, WWE Raw Review, presented by your favorite channel, WrestleFanet. First off, let's begin how the night began with the intense confrontation between CM Punk and Drew McIntyre with their special guest referee of the match, Seth freaking Rollins. So Rollins was announced as the guest referee for their match last week and this week a segment was scheduled which was the referee instructions that Rollins was supposed to give to both men which included that they cannot touch each other, they cannot lay a finger on each other or else their match would be cancelled. But that didn't let their mouth stop the talking as they went back and forth bringing up their heated rivalries and the events that have led to this highly anticipated match at SummerSlam. Moreover, Rollins played another factor in intensifying the anger between both men as Rollins typically hates both of them. You know that. The drip god doesn't like them. Especially CM Punk. Of course, we've known their history for quite some years now. Anyways, getting back to the segment, the segment went back and forth in verbal jabs as Drew McIntyre said that he's gonna be very much dangerous when the bell rings while CM Punk did not look to back down even though it's gonna be his very first fight back on WWE television programming, especially in singles action. However, the end of the segment was not what many of them were expecting as when CM Punk was rallying up the fans that he had them by his side, he asked Drew McIntyre, what do you have on your side? And McIntyre finally pulled out the big guns and took out the bracelet that he took from CM Punk's hand which has the name of his beautiful wife AJ Lee and his beloved dog Larry. Take it from me. Punk had almost come to blows with their match getting cancelled for SummerSlam but he managed to hang off his cool and did not touch McIntyre with the segment ending very much in a heated moment between Punk and McIntyre that is gonna explode when WWE reaches Cleveland, Ohio for SummerSlam. In a footnote that followed, Zelina Vega was being interviewed backstage by Jackie Redman when Zoe Stark, Shayna Baszler and their new leader Sonia Deville attacked La Menusa very badly on her previously injured arm aggravating the injury further so we will have to keep an eye on if Zelina Vega is totally out of action or this is just Triple H is another way of burying the talent that has been trending on Twitter with the push Zelina moment. Next off, the Wired Six have made their presence in a much, much bigger way this week on Monday Night Raw. So the action began with Wired Six's arch rivals, the Creed Brothers and Chad Gable in a scheduled tag team match against Gable's former allies, the Alpha Academies, Akira Tozawa and Otis. The action was going jam-packed and it was a thrilling encounter until the numbers game caught up to Otis who ultimately succumbed to it giving the Creed brothers the victory and Chad Gable the pleasure to beat down Otis even after the match was over. Although Maxine Dupree tried to intervene and even slapped Gable right across the face, just as Gable was about to retaliate, the lights once again went off and off came their heated rivals, the Wyatt Six. But the twist in the turn this week was that the three male members that came out firstly revealed their identities. Yes, they took off their masks. And as expected, it was Joe Gacy, Eric Rowan and Dexter Loomis. Not only that, the sister Abigail of the White Six that was revealed to be Nikki Cross jumped from the top rope right onto Gable and this led to the White Six laying a beat down on the Creed brothers and Gable who managed to scoot off the ring only to be 
found himself confronted by Uncle Howdy at the entrance ramp and scaring the lights off him, scaring him right back to the backstage area, sending him right to the backstage area and ending the segment with a freaking eerie laugh like only Uncle Howdy can do. But the story did not end for the night right there as another VHS tape showed the origins of Dexter Loomis's Mercy the Buzzard character who had been found by the Wired safe and now been made more significant and this set the tone for the Wired 6's official in-ring debut scheduled for next week's edition of Monday Night Raw where they will battle Chad Gable and the Creed brothers in a highly intense six-man tag team action. In two footnotes that followed, we saw Pete Dunn attacking Sheamus with his shillelagh during his match against Bronson Reed, costing him the opportunity to win and setting the tone for a further intense rivalry between the two brawlers. On the other hand, the awesome one, The Miz, was announced to be the official host for WWE SummerSlam this year as the event is set to take place in his original hometown of Cleveland, Ohio. Next off, the intense and the compelling saga of the Judgment Day and Liv Morgan. So the night started with Liv Morgan decimating Judgment Day's beloved clubhouse with some eerie messages, some drawing signs and whatnot. It was not a good sign to see. Trust me, it was not a good sign. Do you think it was a good sign that Judgment Day's clubhouse was destroyed? Tell me in the comment section and let's move forward. As the night continued, Rhea Ripley was further aggravated by Liv's action and wanted the Judgment Day members to solve it for them. But only what the other member Carlito did was get a match for Dominic Mysterio against Sami Zayn. So where did the Liv Morgan problem solve? And he himself got a match against main event Yeet Jey Uso, which he seemingly lost. <laughs> Anyhow, as the night intensified right before Dominic Mysterio's match against Sami Zayn, we saw a vignette featuring Liv Morgan in a slightly demonic setting where she was seen with all her iconic Dominic Mysterio mementos, artifacts, pictures and whatnot. She said that she loved Dominic Mysterio with all her heart but after Mysterio berated her last week and told her that she hated her, Liv Morgan was nothing more than a broken woman who was out to complete her revenge tour. She even went on to call Dominic Mysterio not the man she thought but only as the vineyard came to a close, Liv Morgan promised to end her Liv Morgan revenge tour by ending her heated rival Rhea Ripley once and for all. However, Mami herself had a few words to say that this time she was coming to hurt Liv Morgan even worse than she did previously when she injured her shoulder and vowed to take back her Women's World Championship that she never lost and vowing to make Morgan pay for everything she has been trying to steal from her including the Women's Championship and her beloved Latino heat, Dominic Mysterio. The last footnote of the night saw Damage Control making their return to confront Zoe Stark, Shayna Baszler and Sonya Deville after they had been taken up by the terrorizing trio and this even led to setting up a match next week between Dakota Kai and Sonya Deville in one-on-one -on -one action making sure that Damage Control was back to rule the women's division. And the last and final segment for the night was the main event schedule for the evening. That was the Ring General Gunther taking on the Prince Finn Balor. Gunther had started off the night with a vignette standing in an empty arena and berating Judgment Day, calling them once again street trash. But went on to say that he had respected Finn Balor as a wrestler and even looked up to him. Finn Balor, I used to look up to you. Hmm, that's quite interesting but made it absolutely clear that Finn Balor had become street trash himself since he joined Judgment Day. Balor had heard the comments and was willing to not let Gunther slip off so easily, asking the Judgment Day crews to go it all alone to take care of the ring NRL. The match was a highly enthralling experience, it went back and forth, it was hard hitting and it had all the strengths of a classic wrestling bout. However, the ending was not pleasant at all for Finn Balor as he found himself locked in a sleeper hole, causing him to pass out and give Gunther the victory by knockout. Gunther did not stop right there after his victory as he continued to hold the sleeper hole until the World Heavyweight Champion and Finn Balor's Judgment Day cohort Damien Priest came out and a brawl ensured to end Monday Night Raw on a high note, 
setting the tone for their upcoming World Heavyweight Championship match at the biggest party of the summer this week, that is SummerSlam. Well fans, that was it for this edition of Monday Night Raw Review presented by your favorite channel WrestleFanit. If you like this video then like, comment, share, subscribe and make sure you keep on tuning each and every week for this exciting breakdown. So guys with that said, I'm gonna see you all after SummerSlam where it's gonna be a jam packed night of shocking moments and possible returns. Mark my words. Take care guys and I'm gonna see you all in the next Raw Review.